What's happening, everybody? Hey, thanks for coming to youth group tonight. I do pray that you are blessed through what you hear in the next few minutes and blessed through what you've read in Romans. We're talking about Romans chapter 10 tonight, and it's a fantastic chapter as this book is the clearest description of the gospel in the whole New Testament. And the gospel is a churchy word, but it simply means this, good news. Good news. And there's all kinds of good news in the book of Romans, primarily the good news being that you don't go to heaven by being good. You go to heaven because Jesus was good. In fact, not just good, he was perfect. He lived the life that you couldn't live, a life of perfection. And he died the death that all of us should have died. He died for sin. He literally took sin, our sin, yours, mine, on himself on the cross and God punished him for your disobedience and for mine. And from that place, he offers you his righteousness, which means perfection. So that when you stand before God, you stand before God as somebody who really is perfect in God's eyes. And that has nothing to do with you. Primarily, it has everything to do with what Jesus did for you. And, and this is Paul's point in Romans chapter 10, that's available to anybody who will ask for it. That God will give the gift of righteousness to anyone who will turn to him in faith and ask for it. It's just that simple. So let's look at Romans 10 just for a moment. If you've got your Bibles, love for you to turn there. I'm going to read some of it for you. Paul's going to talk about people right off the bat who think they can earn salvation through keeping the rules. He's particularly talking about uh, good Jews who are looking at the laws in the Old Testament as a way to show God that they're worthy of his love, that they've earned heaven through rule keeping. Paul's going to say it doesn't work that way. So speaking about somebody like that, <clears throat> he says in chapter 10, verse 3, for being ignorant, I'll back up to verse 2, I can testify that they have a zeal for God, but it's not enlightened. People who think this way, they've got a zeal for God. They want to please God, but it's not the right kind of zeal. For being ignorant of the righteousness that comes from God and seeking to establish it on their own, they have not submitted to God's righteousness. There it is. People who said, God, I'm going to show you that I'm worthy of your love. I'm going to earn righteousness through my own rule keeping. God says, no, nope, you need to submit to my righteousness, which means you need to let me give it to you through faith. Verse 4, for Christ is the end of the law, that there may be righteousness for who? For everyone who believes. And then Paul's going to use some Old Testament verses to say, hey, don't say it's impossible to get saved, so to speak. Don't say it's impossible for God to give you his righteousness. It's easy. All you have to do is confess and ask. That's what he's saying when he says this in verse 6. The righteousness that comes from faith says, don't say in your heart, who will ascend to heaven? Oh, it's so hard to get God's righteousness. It's like on top of Mount Everest. I can't possibly get it. Or who will descend to the abyss? Oh, it's in the Marinara Trench, five miles under the ocean. I can't go get it. Paul says, no, verse 8, what does the scripture say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. Here it is, verse 9, one of the most famous passages in the whole Bible, explaining how somebody receives God's righteousness. Because, verse 9, if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Saved from what? Saved from the punishment of sin, which is death, eternal death, apart from God. You'll be saved from that. Verse 10, for one who believes with the heart is justified, one who confesses with the mouth is saved. Justified means there in verse 10, it means to be declared legally innocent before God. It means God as the judge has stood up in the courtroom of heaven and he's brought the gavel down and he's declared you innocent as though you've never sinned and you walk out of court, the courtroom of heaven, free. Why? Because of the righteousness you have in Jesus. And Paul says it's available to anybody who wants it. That's what he means in verse 12. For there's no distinction between Jew and Greek, Jew and Gentile, the same Lord is Lord of all, and he's generous to all who calls on him. Verse 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I hope you would. I'd hope you call on the name of the Lord. Say, God, I, I want your righteousness. I want you to give it to me. 
because he will. He's a good and gracious God. He'll give it to anybody who asks him for it. And with that, Paul launches into this missionary encouragement as he talks to the church. He says, look, we got to go tell the whole world about this. That's what he means in verse 14 when he says, well, how is someone to call when they've not believed? And how are they to believe if they've never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim? And how are they to proclaim unless someone is sent? He's like, so we got to go. We got to send people. We got to proclaim so the world can believe, so they can call on the name of Jesus and be saved. And he quotes another scripture from the Old Testament there. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. And I just want you to know that God might very well be raising some of you up to go and have beautiful feet, that he might be calling you as the next missionary to go and tell the world about Jesus as the love of God's flooded into your heart, as you accept who he is, who he's, what he's done for you in Christ, that it might flood your heart to the extent, extent where you want to go and tell others and that you might even go to the ends of the earth. Somebody's got to be the next missionaries. Somebody has to be the next pastors. Maybe it's you. It's not going to be me. I'm going to be old. All right, so <clears throat> verse 17. So faith comes from hearing what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. And Paul's talking about these Jews again, the ones that he started the chapter describing, the ones who want to earn God's righteousness by keeping the rules. And he says, what's really sad is that they have heard, but they don't believe. Verse 18, but I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have. Verse 19, again, he says, did Israel not understand? And no, they haven't. There are, there are going to be, there are some of Paul's own friends, Jews, Israelites, who are going to try and cling to the Old Testament as a way to earn God's love, and it's just never going to work that way. So his point here is that, you know, God's response to that is to say, well, I'm just going to announce the message to the whole world, and whoever believes, believes. Whoever comes in by faith through Christ comes in, Jew or not. Verse 20, so Isaiah is so bold to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. But of Israel, these are those Jews that want to keep the law as a means of righteousness. Of Israel, he says, all day long I've held out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. Isn't it interesting that Paul uses the word disobedient for legalism? Those who would say, God, look at me and all that I'm doing to earn your love. He says, actually, that's just disobedience. <laughs> Because <laughs> you're not obeying the righteousness of God that comes through faith. That's interesting, isn't it? Yet he's been found by those who didn't seek him and shown his face to those who didn't ask for him. And that's you. You didn't ask for God and you didn't seek God, but he sought after you and you found him. And that's pure gift. And I hope you'd be encouraged by that today. See ya.